Hello again, and welcome back, or welcome to something slightly different, I suppose, uh, to another video where today I'm going to try something different. Uh, I've recently had a few people comment on some of my videos and send me some messages asking me about why I use FMOD uh, and why I use, or just questions about middleware in general, you know, what about wires and other sort of options that you have. So I thought uh, I'd go back to basics. Instead of doing a tutorial today, I thought I'd talk about audio middleware in general, what it kind of does what it provides, the pros and cons, give a nice little overview of it all for anyone who's not too sure what it's all about, okay? So hopefully this is useful for some of you uh, and let's jump it straight into it, shall we? So let's start with the very basics. What is audio middleware? So basically what it is, is, is software that integrates audio files into your game engine, which is great because it allows both sound designers and programmers to design and build the soundscape of the game. Uh, you can integrate middleware with Unity, with Unreal, uh, and you can even integrate it with custom game engines thanks to the, the API they come with. Uh, they're designed basically to make impl implementation of your audio nice and easy, quick, very quick actually, nice and flexible, and they also provide a lot more possibilities for creating audio interactive, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, so. There's quite a few options out there. The two main options, or the two main popular options, are probably WISE and then FMOD. So WISE is like the big daddy, I suppose, of uh, middleware. It's, uh, I think it was the one to come first. I think it was first released in 2006. It's very popular with big AAA companies. So if that's kind of you know, what you're looking into getting into, it's worth considering WISE. It's very powerful and comes with a lot of different options for kind of organizing and designing your sounds and how they're gonna be listened to. Uh, FMOD is uh, a lot more popular around smaller productions and sort of indie developers. Uh, it's laid out to kind of emulate what a sound designer or sound engineer or music composer would see in, uh, you know, their traditional audio editing software or DAW. Uh, so it's nice and familiar to, you know, those people who are going to be using it, you know, which is great. Uh, Elias, Elias I've not used personally myself and I've only recently just heard of it to be honest. From my understanding, it is designed around music uh, in particular. Uh, it's a way of creating, you know, really great interactive music that you know changes depending on what's going on within the game. Uh, and I believe it's also compatible with other middleware, so you can use it with FMOD or Wise or you know any other choice, uh, which is great if you want to kind of use, say, Wise for sound and Elias for your music. You can do that. And then Fabric, uh, again, I haven't personally used it myself. Um, but it is a plugin, I think. It's a plugin for Unity specifically, and it just gives Unity a few more options with designing its audio, and again, helps with organizing it. So in the bottom left, you've got uh, Wise. At the top is a screenshot of FMOD, and the bottom right is Elias. Cool stuff. So, what can it all do for you, or what can it do for the game? Well, and they can control many different audio properties, which is great because that means that the game engine and code doesn't necessarily need to. They come with a lot of effects. Uh, so for example, echo, they come with reverb, they come with filtering effects, they come with you know, delay and all sorts of other different stuff, compression and EQ, just to name a few. DSP effects they're called, digital signal processing effects. You can even modulate them uh, over you know, time uh, and you can make it random. So maybe to provide a bit of variety, you can do that as well. You can also automate them, which is where you change them based on variables that are being controlled within the game. Say a player's walking along a surface, they're walking along grass, then they change to uh, a brick or a concrete material. You can set up a parameter and uh, switch the uh, footstep sounds you're playing nice and easily. They can also monitor how much audio is being played at any given time and the impact that has on your computer or the console or whatever system you're using to run the game. So you can check things like CPU, memory and other such variables. Uh, you can adjust the mix, uh, so you can check all your sounds are not too loud, not too quiet, and they're all playing it the right way. Uh, make sure it's all nice and balanced. You can limit the amount of voices or the amount of specific sounds you're hearing. Uh, and they're also VR compatible. So Oculus, for example, they provide plugins for both FMOD and WISE and even Unity if you wanted to just, you know, just use the game engine itself or Unreal. Uh, so you can do that. You can turn mono sounds uh, into kind of these really cool 3D uh, sounds which can be played in you know uh, virtual reality space which is you know, great. So let's talk about how this kind of benefits the game specifically and then we'll talk about some other stuff. Uh, so let's start with uh, less code. Because middleware can control and adjust different audio properties, this basically means that the programmer doesn't need to reference them or create specific variables for controlling them. Uh, which as you can imagine, it saves a huge amount of coding and debugging time 
Uh, and if you're, you know, you've got a bit of budget behind your production, it can even save money in production costs as well. So for example, let's say you had a game with a, a player. The player has a health variable, right? And he takes damage and he loses health. Let's say you wanted a heartbeat sound to come in the more health he loses and you wanted it to speed up, you know, as it gets less and less. Well, you could do that. You'd need the code to sort of trigger the sound and to hook parameters up to that health uh, variable. But within the middleware, you can, you know, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can control the speed and the frequency of the heartbeat. You can even add filters so that other sounds kind of quiet uh, and you can even fade it in and fade it out. So it doesn't have to come in straight away. As the health gets lower, it can slowly fade in. And if, it, if the health starts picking up again, it can slowly fade out as well. Uh, they also allow you to save on memory, which is really, really, really helpful. <laughs> Uh, because the audio can be compressed into smaller formats that still hold high fidelity, such as the Org Vorbis uh, format. Middleware lets you do this nice and easy. You can pick specific sounds you want to compress and do it within the engine. If for some reason you wanted to change or compress others in different ways, you can do that into different formats. You can. Uh, you can also stream audio. So you can stream audio straight from the hard drive, which is great because that means your uh, it means your audio doesn't have to go into the RAM at all, which again saves on memory. Uh, this, however, can come with a slight delay or a slight latency before the sound is heard. So, for example, if you had a, a gunshot, you'd want that sound to be heard as soon as the player fires the gun, pulls the trigger, right? Makes sense. So, in that sense, streaming probably isn't the best option. What it's good for is for things like music or slow ambiences that fade in. You can use it for that because they don't need to come in straight away. What you could also do is create sound banks and you can kind of organize those sound banks into different aspects of your game so that your sound is only being heard when it's needed. For example, if you look at the picture on the right, uh, that is a picture from Wise. Uh, and as you can see, the sound bank they've called this is Zone 1. So what they're doing is they're, they're only loading sounds they need for Zone 1, which again saves memory. If you've got loads of sounds that are only going to be used in a certain level, there's no point loading it in at different levels. And with those sound banks, you can also load in any data associated with those sounds. So again, parameters, effects, anything you want to change, all that can be stored within a sound bank and can and therefore you can call it when it's only needed. Great, now then, uh, because you're, in most cases anyway, the middleware is operated by the sound designer, the design behind how the audio will be manipulated within the game can be worked on earlier in development. Uh, which means that whilst mechanics and basic code is still being created, you can kind of get a rough idea of how the sounds will be triggered uh, and how the sounds will work together. Uh, which means that any issues coming up during development that may affect this interactive audio, uh, you can kind of adapt it, you can kind of work off it and you know prepare for any big changes. So for example, say you had some adaptive music, you had a stealth game and you wanted the music to change depending on what's happening in the game. So you've got two states that the player can be in, either the player's not spotted by an enemy or they are. Say you've got you know drums and a bass guitar that play when the player is not being spotted, but then you want to bring a guitar and synths when they are being spotted. Great, you get that set up nice and easy. But then later on in development, uh, you decide to add a third state and say that, okay, when the player has been spotted, but then escapes, capture, doesn't get caught, whatever. The enemies are then actively looking for the player. We want to add some more music to represent that. Well, you can easily do that. You can say, okay, well now let's take the, I don't know, the bass and the guitar, for example, let's keep them in, but take the drums and the synth out, okay? So you can easily kind of manipulate layers, for example. Cool, so it can also help uh, with optimization. So most middleware comes with a dedicated profiler. Uh, which, like I said earlier, can measure CPU usage, memory, and even specific things for the audio, such as the level of the sounds and the amount of voices you're playing. So obviously, things like Unreal and Unity, they come with their own dedicated profilers, which monitor all sorts of stuff, but with this, you can dedicate specifically to audio. A dev team can monitor the impact the audio is having on their game's overall performance. It also it allows you to record a, a session that you profile, uh, and as it's being recorded, you can change settings within the middleware as the game's being run. So, you can, so if you notice, for example, you've got too many voices within a certain level, you can say, okay, well, let's quickly change that now. And then you can see the impact that has, say, on the CPU, for example. And then what you could do is also save those sessions. So then you can come back to them later and maybe compare them with some other sessions to say, okay, well, let's see how this change impacted the game. Did it make a big difference or not? And this in general kind of just helps with organizing as well. Say you've got uh, your game engine's profiler that's monitoring, you know, graphics and animation and the impact ha they have and all sorts of other variables. With this, because it's dedicated to audio, you can keep that separate and you can tell the difference it's having, you know. 
So how does this benefit the sound engineer? Well, obviously this benefits them pretty easily. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but to sum up, a few things it can do is it can help them design interactive sounds and get really creative, which is great. For example, I like to use middleware for ambiences. Instead of just providing a 30 second looping sound, I can say, well, let's have extra sounds that kind of fade in and fade out randomly. Let's have sounds that come in depending on the location of the player. You can do stuff like that and it can do it really well and really quickly. Uh, you can also balance the audio dynamically. So for example, if you look at the bottom, that's F mod again. This is the uh, mixer window. So what you can do is, you know, you can balance, say, your music with your voices. Obviously, you want to make sure the voices in your game are heard. So you can kind of drop music out depending on when the voices come in. You can do that quite easily. It helps kind of when the sound engineer or sound designer is creating you know, the sounds or if a music composer is, you know, composing their music, it helps early on when they're kind of creating those audio files because they can kind of anticipate how they're going to use those files within the middleware. They can say, okay, if I've got two different audio files that are going to be played at the same time, they're both quite bassy and they have a lot of um, low end, a lot of low frequencies, that could cause some muddy sounds uh, and they can kind of clash together and not be heard very well. So we kind of want to anticipate that. So, okay, let's say that when sound A is played uh, and sound B comes in while sound A is still being played, let's drop the volume of sound A or let's lessen those low frequencies that might call that clash with sound B. And you can do that nice and easily within middleware. Uh, and also they come with very clear um, interfaces, which again, if you've got a sound engineer that's you know maybe not the best at coding, they can do all this cool interactive stuff and they can kind of take a weight off of the designers or the programmers without no needing to know C++ or C Sharp or what have you. So like anything, obviously there's gonna be disadvantages. This middleware, whilst you know, I'm pointing out all the good stuff, it's not gonna be viable for every uh, development team and there's a few things you kind of should consider before you jump on and say, okay, let's use Y, so we're gonna to commit to that. So obviously this is software and because it's software it's going to be limited whereas code you can kind of do whatever you want an example of why you might opt for code over middleware is i think i believe in f mod uh, you get events that's kind of how your sounds built around you put your sounds into these events and then you call those events to be played right and you can do all sorts of stuff with the events but you can't sort of take one event and have it condition or, or change parameters within another event which can can be a little bit annoying there are a few ways of working around it for example you can use side uh, chain compression or ducking to kind of lower the sound of one when another plays you can group them together in buses but, but without going too much into it there's no easy streamlined way of kind of doing that whereas obviously in code you can do that you can do whatever you want because it's you know it goes into so much detail and provides a lot of freedom so that's something to bear in mind uh, also they can it can sometimes take a little bit of unnecessary time for a programmer to learn the API associated with these audio engines say for example you're building a racing game and you need uh, an audio engine that you know obviously provides good dynamic and interactive audio for your, your car engines as they rev up and rev down or as a you know a Doppler effect for example as a car shoots past the camera now you could use middleware but bearing in mind that middleware is obviously designed for any sort of game it's designed for fighting games RPGs stealth games so it might be easier for them to just build an audio engine themselves they might be able to get that set up quicker and it might be a bit more specific for your game so again that's something else to consider um, make and take bugs to be honest I've never really had any issue with bugs in middleware where I've used fmod they update it very very frequently so even if there was a bug that I you know stumbled upon or was there that I didn't notice you know they're very good at fixing them but again with code you kind of don't have that issue so that might be something to consider as well and depending on the budget they do cost a bit of money now if you are learning to use F Model Wise or any other uh, middleware, it's free. If you want to just download it and try it out, it's free. And if you want to use them for a non-commercial project just to get something out there, it's free. But once you have a bit of a budget and you have kind of a fairly decent sized project, there are a few licenses to consider. So here are two pricing schemes. This is for FMOD and WISE. FMOD being at the top right, WISE being at the bottom. They charge, I believe, based on the number of games you're producing. So if you're producing one game and you have a certain amount of budget, they'll charge you X amount for the use of their middleware within the game. It doesn't matter how many platforms you plan on releasing that game for, it could be one or it could be 10. You'll still be charged that one amount. Uh, and it's worth, you know, again, going to their websites, there's a lot more information on there seeing what they provide and how much they charge for that. Uh, but obviously that is a big thing to consider. 
So a few final points to quickly go over. Audio middleware obviously provides a lot of familiarity and creativity for an audio designer. And it can also save time for a programmer. It can also save money in the long run by shortening development time and obviously work costs and all that sort of stuff. And it can add a lot more quality to the sound. You know, like I said, there's a lot of effects. You can do a lot of cool balancing stuff and make it really interactive. Uh, so, you know, in that sense, it's really, really great. Obviously, if you do consider plan on using one of these, it's worth discussing things like pricing, the efficiency of it, work preferences with different team members. Say for example, you have an animator and the animator knows that they're gonna need or there's gonna be sounds associated with those animations. It might be worth considering uh, their thoughts on it and if it will affect their workflow at all. And one final thing I'd like to direct your attention to. So obviously you can go to, you can go on YouTube and you can type in audio middleware and there's a lot of information about what it can do, the pros and the cons. Uh, but if you are interested in checking some more middleware stuff out, I'd highly recommend checking out a blog post by Adam Croft, who is a sound engineer. He's worked with companies like Bungie, 343 Industries, Turn 10 Studios, and he's a bit of a wizard, <laughs> basically. Um, but his blog post is called Why Some Engineers Fight Against Audio Middleware. And it's really uh, interesting, a really good insight into a team that he was not working with, but you know, kind of knew someone was working in. Uh, they were considering using middleware, but they had a few issues. Some team members were against this, some were for. Uh, and obviously it took a bit of time for them to resolve it. So it's really interesting on to see how some teams you know go about resolving it why it can cause some issues for some teams and be great for others so definitely worth checking that out uh, i'll put a link to that in the description and some other youtube videos i think is worth checking out if you're interested in more information and i think with that that about sums it up so thank you very much for listening um obviously this is again something a little bit different i do like to try and mix it up from time to time uh if you want to check out some of my fmod and unity tutorials they're all on this channel and so are my sort of sound design uh kind of show off prototype -y, mess around things like when I take a game and add some sound to it you're more than welcome to check them out follow me on Twitter check out my website and all that good stuff uh, and yeah I'd love to let I'd love to know if this was helpful for any of you hopefully it was because like I said there's been a few people who had some questions hopefully I've answered them or hopefully I've sent you in the right direction so uh, yeah thank you very much for checking out this video I've been Henry Score and I'll see you in the next one